opportunity that we are called this Sabbath day to speak of God's word, right? This morning, um, two, I would like to introduce my friend who's going to speak to us, who God chose. Jen texted me, um, that was like February. Sabi niya sa akin, sino po ba pwede mag-speak? And I didn't know uh, for your anniversary. Sabi ko, you wait. Because meron po kami, in our group, we have this, uh, what you call that, it's a part of our system that we, before we decide on something, we always seek God through prayer and fasting. So I told Jen, I, need, I will just I'll tell you after a few days who God will send. And I fasted for, I fasted and prayed for days. And God told me, you have to choose Josh to speak this morning. Because Joshua said in the book, Jesus and Jehovah saints. You know Joshua, his type, he was with Moses. He saw, he fought. He saw how, how Moses, how Moses, how he, did, he was a witness of God's goodness to the Israelites. And this morning, Joshua Banasi, he is called to speak of his word today to give us an inspiration that in this time of need, we always should abide in Jesus. This is, I would like to call my friend who is part of our group, Joshua Banasi. That's great. Father in heaven, bless us and sanctify us this Sabbath. Be with us, O Lord. Give us wisdom to understand your words. And speak to me, dear Father. Possess me with your Holy Spirit. And be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Sister Kin, for that wonderful introduction. I thought I was the Joshua who is with Moses. I feel that I am Joshua. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the wind is... God is good. And all the time. This church reminds me of the church where I grew up. It reminds me when I was, I think I was four years old. Nung nag-start na ako magkaisip. It reminds me of the same church, the same edifice, the same status na kinukonstruct pa lang. It reminds me where I learned to have faith. Amen? Amen. And it feels like home. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you may, allow me to say, there is no place like home. Alright? Ako po ay naghihingi ng paumanhin because I, well, I understand Tagalog and I can speak Tagalog, but when it comes to public speaking, I cannot speak Tagalog fluently. I cannot express myself because you know, I am an FBI. And I try to seek help from my wife, but unfortunately, he is an NBI. And yung resulta ho ng NBI at saka FBI nung nagsama, nagkaroon ng dalawang anak na mga CSIs. Alam niyo yung CSI? Scene of the Crime Investigator. FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation. NBI. Pero hindi ho yung tinutukoy ko. Ang tinutukoy ko ho ay isang FBI na full-blooded ilonggo. Sino ba ko yung mga ilonggo dito? Taas ang kamay. Ay, ginapiko, ginapala. Ha? NBI. Nakapangasawa ho ako ng isang NBI. And that means she's a natural-born iliganon. Sino ba ang taga-iligan dito? Wala, ikaw lang nag-iisa dito. Yung mga anak ko namin ay mga CSIs. 
that doesn't mean that they're scene of the crime investigator. They are cesarean sexual infants. Uh, they were delivered through cesarean sexual infants. All right. To further introduce myself, by the way, I am from Baolon. And it's not just that I am an FBI. I also came from a great-grandfather who is a spy. SPY. And nakapangasawa ho siya ng isang GI. Alam mo yung GI, Joe? GI. What do you mean by GI? It's an American soldier. It's a spy. It's like James Bond. Huh? Huh? Pero hindi ho yung spy na tinutukoy ko. Ha? Tinutukoy po ho. Tinutukoy ko ho. Ay isang, siya ho ay isang Spanish-Pilipino young man na nakapangasawa po ng GI, ibig sabihin genuine in check. So ako yung resulta after three generations, ako yung naging resulta. So thank you very much for having me here. Our theme for this Sabbath, I will be talking about growing with Christ. What's our theme? I don't hear you. What's our theme for this Sabbath? Alright. Ililink ko natin mamaya yan sa inyong theme. Testimonies of Miracles. Growing with Christ. I have a second theme. Faith and obedience. Alright? Now, let's talk about how do we grow with Christ. And let's talk about what is faith and obedience? Kanina ho, binasa sa atin ang talata sa scripture reading in John 15.5. And let me read it again for you. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who believes in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Ito ho yung vine. This is the vine. There you go. This is the vine. And this is the branches. This is the fruit. The result of the connection of the branches from the vine. Okay. Para ho maintindihan ho natin, basahin po natin ito sa wikang Tagalog. Ang sinasabi ho ay, ako ang puno ng ubas, kayo ang mga sanga. Sino ang mga sanga? Tayo. Okay. Sino ang puno? Si Kristo. Okay. Ang nananatili sa akin, what do you mean that in English? You are connected together at ako'y sa kanya ay siyang nagbubunga ng marami. Okay, pwede bang magbunga yung ubas na hindi konektado sa puno? May nakita ho ba kayong sanga ng ubas na nabunga na hindi konektado sa puno? Wala. Isa yung mirakulo. Mirakulo na hindi mangyayari. Okay. Pagpatuloy mo natin. Sapagkat kung kayo'y hiwalay sa akin, ay wala kayong magagawa. Okay. Ito ho yung puno. Again, sino to? Sino itong sanga? Kung tayo'y konektado, anong mangyayari sa atin? Mamumunga. Bago tayo mamunga, tayo muna ay tutubo. Di ba? Tutubo tayo, lalabong yung mga uh, dahon natin, hahaba yung mga sanga, saka tayo mamumunga. Simple as that. that sci the science of growth in this grade is as, as simple as our spiritual growth. If we are connected with Christ, that is where the growth starts. If we are not connected, then we will all gonna die. Simple. That, how, that is how simple our faith is. Our connection with Christ is everything. If we are not connected with Christ, then our spirit 
spiritual aspect or spiritual lives will be lost. But the question is, what is that connection? Ano yung connection na yan? Sinasabi natin palagi, oh, I'm with Christ. Oh, I am connected with Christ. But let us understand what kind of connection is needed for us to be properly and strongly connected with the vine which is Christ. What is that? Anybody? What is the connection that we need in order for us to be uh, to, to be stay connected with Christ? What is that connection? Faith. Ang galing. Ah, parang nabasa na yun na yata ito ka lukuhan. Faith. Meron mo nagsasabi na prayer. Yes, prayer is the connection. But what is the source of prayer? Prayer is the result of faith. Because you cannot pray to someone you don't trust. You cannot pray to someone yet you don't have faith. When you pray, you basically ask for forgiveness. You ask for help. You ask for blessing. You share your trouble. You confess everything. And you cannot do this to someone that you don't trust. Someone that you don't have faith. Basically, our connection with Christ is with faith and through faith. Basahin po natin kung ano yung opinion ng ating propeta si Ellen White. In Steps to Christ, page 62, the last paragraph, and I encourage everyone to read this because paminsan-minsan lang ho ako nagbasa, late na ho ako, late bloomer ho ako. When it comes to spirituality, thanks to my friend, thanks to Pastor Paul, I am a late bloomer but better late than never. And let me share to you what Ellen White says in Steps to Christ, page 62, this is the last paragraph, and he, she said, Christ changes the heart. Sino yung nagsichange ng heart? Si Christ. Well, my, sometimes my wife changes my heart. <laughs> Christ changes my heart. The heart. He abides in me. It, he abides in your heart by faith. Okay? He abides in your heart by faith. Isaysayin ho natin. What's the connection? Faith. He abides in your heart by faith. When He abides in your heart, what will happen to your heart? Change. For worse or for good? For good. Alright. Klaruin ko lang. When he, Christ abides in your heart, He changes your heart for good and for better. Continue. You are to maintain, ito ho, ang pinaka-importante. You are maintain this connection with Christ by what? By what? And continual surrender of your will to, to Him. And so long as you do this, He will work in you to will and to do. What is the connection? What is the connection? Faith. How do we maintain that connection? Through what? Maintain this connection with Christ by? By faith. So faith is everything. Again, what's our theme for the Sabbath? Growing with Christ. And how do we grow with Christ? We need connection. And how do we connect? Through faith. How do we maintain that connection? Through faith. Okay, what is faith? Isa-isahin mo natin and let's connect everything later. Isa-isahin mo natin. What is faith? Let us read Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. For by grace you have been saved through what? And this is not of your own doing. Ito sana, okay na sana eh. When I was composing this sermon, I was actually already satisfied when I saw this verse. But sabi nga, tayong mga Adventists, we're not just looking at one verse. We are understanding the Bible contextually. So I read the whole chapter, I read the whole book, and I saw this one. It is the gift of God, not as a result of your works, 
so that no one may boost. Now, faith is okay. But when you see works, that's another thing. It may be the result of your faith or the result of something else. Now, let us understand this further. Ano yung sinasabi when, it, you, when you say works? Anong ibig sabihin ng works? Other term, term of works. One. Basahin nun natin sa James 21, 2.21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac a son on the altar? Let us understand this. What happened to Abraham when he sacrificed? Who asked him? God. God asked him, bring your son and bring yung panggatong dyan, magdala ka ng kutsilyo, dalhin mo siya sa uh, bundok, tapos i- Sacrifice mo siya. That is very hard. Can you do that? I think nowadays nobody can have the same faith as what Abraham had. But what does it mean by this verse? When you say works, it means what did Abraham do? He obeyed when God asked him to do something. Abraham, bring forth your son and bring him to the altar. What did he do? Did he disobey? He obeyed. He followed. Yes. And that means works is obedience. All right? Works is obedience. But I am still confused. Parang it's like verse, prophet, Disciple versus disciple contradicting each other. Who wrote? James. James himself. But when you look at the writings of Paul, it seems to me that he is saying different things. Basahin natin. In Romans 3.20, who wrote Romans? Sino yung nagsulat nun? It's Paul. Of course. It's a letter to the Romans. It says here, For no human being will be justified in his sight by works of the law. Ang sabi yung kanina ni James, justified by works. Sabi naman ni Paul, you cannot be justified by works of the law. Alright? Ano ba yung sinasabi niya? Intindihin, I want you to listen to this very carefully because this topic is actually very crucial in our faith because there's a very thin line. If you don't understand this one, if you don't understand what is faith and what is work, it may lead you to somewhere else and not to salvation. And I want you to be attentive on this. Second, for we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. That is Romans 3.18, uh, 3.28. Second is, meron siya dito, third. Yet we know that a man is not justified by works of the law through faith in Jesus Christ. And you can see there's three more that says works of the law, or three. Works of the law, works of the law, works of the law. And that is what you can see in another text in Galatians. Works of the law. Here comes another works of the law. Here comes another works of the law. That is what Paul is saying. But James is saying, seems to me, that James is saying a different opinion. Let's go back to James. Alright? Intindihin mo natin to. This is very important. Ano yung sinasabi ni Paul kanina? Works of the what? Works of the law. Sinasabi ni James, basahin mo natin. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead. Sinasabi ni Paul, not Pastor Paul, the disciple Paul, he is a modern day disciple, pero sinasabi ni Paul, works of the law is cannot justify us, cannot save us. And sinasabi naman ni James, works without or faith without works is dead. Seems there, nag-aaway ba itong mga to? I don't know. Let's read more. 
Sinasabi ni James sa 2.17 Even so faith, if it has not works, is dead. Meron pa. What that it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? He is actually questioning people who says that I have faith but doesn't have works. Next is, ye a man say, thou hast faith and I have worked. Sabi ni James, show me your faith without your works and I will show thee my faith by my what? Works. So si Paul, sinasabi niyang works na hindi makakasay. Si James naman, sinasabi niya works. That is the result of our faith. Have you noticed something in the passages that I have shared to you? Balik tayo kay Paul. Ano nakikita nyo? I highlighted the words, the phrase, what? What is this? Works of the law. All of the passages or most of the passages of Paul, when he talks about works, always nakalagay doon works of the law. Kay James naman, when you read James' worksmanship, it says here, every time he mentioned the word, the word works, which means obedience, it is always with, what is this? Faith. Faith. So let me conclude. Ang sinasabi ni Paul about works of the law. And works of the law is what, according to him, does not save. And sinasabi naman ni James, works of faith. They're not actually contradicting each other. They are complementing each other. Amen? But many people, including people in our church, are trying to generalize the word works nowadays. Nowadays, they're trying to generalize and put legalism on the word works and obedience. But they're not the same. Paul and James is not actually quarreling. Hindi po sila nag-aaway. They're complementing each other. When Paul says about the works of the law, James is talking about works that can save you. James is actually complimenting Paul because Paul is talking about a different kind of works, a different kind of obedience. And James is actually complimenting what Paul is saying. This is the kind of works and the kind of obedience that we need to do in order for us to be what? Say. Clear? Amen. Amen. The question is, is my faith working? Is my faith working? Is my faith working? Yes. Is your faith working? Let us understand further. Let's read James 2.22. Medyo mainit dito ah, pero I am happy that it is hot here because I also feel that the spirit in here, the faith in here is also hot. Amen? Amen. Yun. This is basically from James 2.21. This is a continuation. He said, Do you see that faith was working together with his works? Ito yung pinaka-importante. And by faith works. And by works, sorry. And by works, faith was made perfect. No yung ibig sabihin nun? Faith was made perfect. Again, let's go back to what I have presented you. We are saved. Our salvation is by what? By grace. We have been saved by grace through our what? Faith. To our faith. Faith, genuine faith, produces works. Produces what? Obedience. Sabi ni James, and this Paul is not contradicting this. We have established that. And Sabi ni James, if your faith does not work, your faith is what? 
Then, if your car does not run, then your car is a useless car. And if your car does not run, can he bring you to your destination? No. no. So as our faith, our faith, if it does not work, it's useless. It's dead. Dead dog. No way. Patay siya. Useless. But faith that works is the genuine faith. Ang sinasabi dito ni James, he elaborated this further. By faith, that by faith, you're working together with, was working together with your works. So, ano pala siya? They're together. This is the kind of faith that actually produces good works. A kind of faith that produces obedience. But here comes a text, and let us understand this further. And by works, faith was made perfect. In my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you say faith, it does not automatically mean that your faith is already boom, perfect. You have to work your faith constantly for your faith to be strong. For your faith to be perfect. Right? You cannot dispute. That is what the Bible is saying. But faith it produces obedience. Right? And by obedience, our faith becomes perfect. Clear? It's like yung pagmamahalan ng mag-asawa sa isa't isa. Yung pagmamahalan ng pag-asawa sa isa't isa has to bear a child. Kailangan maganak. At once na yung pagmamahalan nila ay magkaroon ng anak, it does not end there. Hindi yung nagtatapos dyan. Yung anak, that child helps them to further nurture their love with each other. That is how, what faith is. Our faith, the genuine faith, has to produce obedience. It has to produce obedience and this obedience is the tool if done consistently, it is a tool so that faith can strengthen itself by obedience. And if you do it constantly, every day, every day you obey God, your faith will be perfect. The story of Abraham. Abraham, when God asked him, leave that place, leave earth, he obeyed. Faith starts with simple act of obedience. But is was his faith perfect already? No. The reason why na nagkaroon po tayo ng gira sa Middle East is because of Abraham also. Yes. When they suffered, uh, you know, you know Tagal nila hindi nagkaanak. And because of his impatient, impatience, he went to Hagar. Sabi din naman ni Sarah, you go to Hagar. E kami ho ni Mrs. Tatlong taon kami hindi nagkaanak. I was actually waiting for him to tell me, oh, you find a Hagar. <laughs> no, ano naman tayo meron kailan doon na. But basically, Abraham, Abraham's faith from the beginning, is not perfect. If God has tested him at the beginning to sacrifice your son, Isaac, probably he would ha wouldn't have surpassed it. Our faith has to develop and has to progress. And the only way for our faith to progress is by obedience. Obedience to God and it does not say obedience to the law. Simple obedience does not talk about obedience to the law. When Abraham, when God said, Abraham, leave that place. 
leaving the place that is, was not written in the law. But God has to command Abraham to leave that place so that I can start to nurture your faith. It starts with a simple act of obedience that leads to another obedience, that leads to another development, that leads to another development, and leads to higher and higher and higher status of your faith. That is what obedience can do to your faith. That is not legalism. That is simple act of obedience. Faith that works. Faith that produces obedience. Obedience that strengthens the faith. And here's what the connection is. Listen to this very carefully. And before I say this, let us all pray. Father in heaven, Bless us and guide us as we conclude this sermon. May everyone understand this. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's the connection. Our works as the product of our faith need works to perfect that faith. What is the connection? What, what, what is the faith? What is faith? It is what? The connection to Christ. All right, here's the connection. If our works and obedience is making our faith strong, then that means our faith makes the connection to Christ stronger. And once our connection with Christ is strong, that means we, we are attached to Him. And when we, when we are attached to Him, that is the start of our spiritual growth. And that is the start that we can say, we are growing with Christ. Amen? So, the, these are all interconnected. Nowadays, my dear brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, Satan is also working double time. He cannot destroy the grace of God to us. He cannot destroy the grace, the love. What he needs to destroy is our obedience. All he needs to do is to take out that one screw, that one nail that says about obedience. Because obedience is the one that strengthens our faith. A strong faith means a strong connection with God. And a strong connection with Christ means that it's the start of our spiritual growth. And once we grow with Christ, that is the best testimony. Testimony of miracle this church will have. Amen? Amen. Faith that produces obedience. Obedience that strengthens the faith. Faith that establishes a strong connection with God. And you, when you are connected with Christ, our Lord and Savior, we are to grow with Him. Amen? Amen. I made a simple illustration. This is the way our salvation is. Our spiritual thing is. This is what I'm talking about. The strengthening process, faith is our connection with Christ. And when we have faith, mankind is here, mankind with faith produces obedience. And obedience, if done constantly, it strengthens the connection here. And this triangle here is the strengthening process. When you have faith, it is not automatic. Right away, you have 100% faith. It's not. It has to start with something and it has to progress day by day through obedience. It has to progress day by day through obedience. It starts with a simple obedience. It also... Destroy, be, be destroyed with simple disobedience. 
And nowadays, I remember the phrase, the words, the verse in the Bible, that even the very election be deceived. Nowadays, Satan is telling everyone, you don't need to obey. We are already under grace. Grace is no problem. Yeah. You don't need to do works. No, you don't need to follow the law. We are already under grace. You don't need to do that anymore. That is what Satan is saying. And unfortunately, people are also following. Too bad. That is cheap grace. One save, always save. No matter what you do, even if you disobey, you will be saved. I don't think so. The only way for us to unlock the key of grace is for us to have a genuine faith. I'm talking about genuine faith. A faith that does not work is dead. And faith that does not work is not a genuine faith. And if your faith is not genuine, can it unlock the grace? No. Cannot. The faith that can only receive the grace is the faith that is genuine. A faith that manifests good works. And by that good works, that faith who produces the obedience will also strengthen itself by the one that he produced. That is obedience strengthening faith. And the connection once again, it says, your obedience, if, that, if it's done constantly, it strengthens your faith. And a strong faith is a strong connection with Christ. And when you have a strong connection with Christ, you are with Christ. And that is when you start to grow. And growing with Christ is the best testimony of miracle this church can have. I will skip this one. But let me appeal to you, everyone. Jesus is coming soon. If he can change the heart of people, he can also change your heart. My friends, they are the witness of who I was. Don't misinterpret or do not treat me like someone uh, my brother kanina sabi niya sa akin, oh pastor, saan ka pastor? I'm not a pastor. I'm not a pastor. I'm just an ordinary man. I was a sinner. Lahat ho, napuntahan ko na. And I don't say I am standing here, I am holier than all of you. No. I was down deep. But because of that simple obedience through my faith, may natitira pa ho pananampalataya sa akin. Pasalamat ho ako, may natitira pa. That very small amount of faith, I use it, I used it, and started to obey one simple act of obedience. And that is when I started to renew my life. Thanks to this group, thanks to Pastor Paul. Thanks to the people surrounding me. God sent them to change me. It's because of that small faith. Small but genuine faith. And that faith started when I decided to obey. And when I started to obey, Sunod, sunod na ho yan. I started obeying this. God give me this progress. I obey this. God give me another progress and progress and progress and progress. And that's the reason why I am here in front of you. From no one. Kung makita niyo ako dati, I have a friend who knows that I, have, I will be speaking here. He asked me, where are you going? Oh, I will be saying a sermon. And he said, you? A sermon in the church? It's impossible. 
He cannot even believe. But that is a miracle. Miracle of faith. And it started with a simple act of obedience. And that obedience has nothing to do with what the legalist says about the law. We're not talking about the law here. We just will be talking about faith. And that faith produces obedience. And that obedience has led me to where I am. If God can change me by that simple faith, through act of simple obedience, and if it's done constantly, how much more you guys, you people that's already there. Our faith is just like our muscle. Parang mga muscle yan. If you don't work out your faith, your muscle will shrink, will lose its mass. Our faith is just like our bones. Correct me if I'm wrong, doc. Our bones, if it's not exposed to stress or not being worked out in a heavy things, our bones will lose density. Our brain, if it's not worked out, our brain will become a dull brain. That's how our faith, how faith is. If we cannot practice our faith, our faith will regress. And we need to do a simple act of obedience constantly and consistently so that our faith will be strengthened. Para po mapalakas natin yung pananampalataya natin, kailangan po nating sundin ng tuloy-tuloy ang utos ng Diyos. Kailangan po natin gumawa gawin ang utos ng Diyos tuloy-tuloy para ho yung pananampalataya natin ay mapalakas at kung yung pananampalataya natin ay malakas yung koneksyon natin kay Kristo ay malakas at kung yung koneksyon natin kay Kristo ay malakas yun ang simula ng ating paglabong paglaki paghaba pagtangkad that is the best testimony this church can do Growing with Christ is the best testimony of miracle to everyone. Faith. Faith that yields obedience. Obedience that strengthens the faith. That's all that is needed. May the Lord bless us this Sabbath. That is my prayer.